here we are again and where I had stopped was to compare the 49, 63, and 84 in Matthew at the top window here is Matthew compared to Luke and why the numbers are different and yet they're saying they're talking about the same topic this is what I had said in earlier in the playlist is called bracketing there are two ways that you handle this prophecy one is by the numbers and then you look for the parallels in the numbers because they end up forming a sort of tic-tac-toe of text the other way is to look for the text and then see what time periods they cover because that's a parallel time period here we're just looking at the numbers so this number is Luke's first date line 28 hi I Luke am writing you 28 years after Christ died he uses the same meter in Luke 1 and again so did James he's so he's aping James so it makes me think maybe James is aping him or he's aping James because James uses the same number to tell you when James is writing um, and then he's playing on 63 because he's tying back to Matthew 24. Alright, so then the question I left off in the last increment was, well, what's 28 years after when Luke writes, not the time of the text that he's covering, but when he writes? Well, that's 86 A.D. 28 plus 58 is 86. See? Alright. And what was going on in 86 that he would want to tie to this text, which is saying being adorned. Okay, being adorned with gifts. What, why, would he, why would he tie that text there? Well, go look. 86 AD, the stadium of Domitian, as a gift. See the word gift in the text? To the people of Rome. In other words, if you were reading this text and you knew the meter at the time that you're reading this because it's your time period and you want to know what's going on when you see adorning his gifts that's going to be real trenchant because you're going to be hearing the news no matter where you are in Rome because they broadcast that kind of stuff that oh the mission just created the stadium of the mission to the people of Rome as a gift because of the buildings that were destroyed by the field of Mars in when look 79 remember remember see back here oops that's Bible works I don't want you to see that yet see this is 79 right here so in addition to Pompey occurring in addition to Titus coming to the throne because his dad Vespasian died in addition to the Pompey bad omen, the field of Mars had been destroyed by fire in 79 AD. This is a Wikipedia article on the mission. A subsection on palaces, villas, and other major buildings he built. See? So there was a seven-year hiatus. Six years, seven years. Hiatus. That there was no stadium. So the mission built one in the interim. And he dedicated it in 86 A.D. So that when you're reading this in 86 or near it, because you would have heard about all this prior to it, because they advertised that kind of stuff in the Roman culture in those days, you'd be thinking, oh, ha, 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 ha. And you'd be linking it to Matthew 24, because that's 79 A.D. when the fire happened. And as a result of the fire happening, the mission is building with a gift you see because you got to remember Bible is written to an audience the audience is gonna know this kind of stuff specific to its culture at that time that's the purpose of prophecy it's gonna be really specific for the time you're in and as I hopefully showed you in the 42nd video forward of this playlist it's real specifically clear the Donald Trump and the Apostate Seven Mountains Christians are in view in Matthew 25 11 as a trend of history okay that started in the 1960s with Jerry Falwell and I've I you know in that 40 second video I listed in the comment section some links so you can demonstrate it to yourself it's real specific it's real easy to know 
what Matthew 25 11 references once you've done the meter and of course once you've seen the past way that the words are used to satirize okay but it gets real specific when you're in that time period so if you were in 86 AD where this ends 28 years from when Luke writes as a prophecy now you got three ways you're using this you're using the text generically about the last days you're also using it specifically for the meter counts to see the parallels in history that might be the last days but might not be the last days and they these parallels will continue to recur and they're tied to specific events because thirdly here you are in that specific time period that's ending in 86 AD and it's going to mark off here satirically the tie between the field of Mars being destroyed in 79 AD when Vespasian died and the stadium that the mission is dedicating and it, it's all about buildings see it's all about buildings it's all about here it was the temple okay but in a way especially in Roman culture when they built those buildings it was always to honor the gods and yet if you go look there now it's in ruins that's the whole point of the passage. You see all these beautiful buildings and beautiful stones. The beautiful stones. That's what the apostles were praising when they were talking to Jesus. And he's saying, uh-uh. Ain't, there ain't going to be nothing left on top of the other. Okay? Which in Luke right here is reserved for 94 AD. Alright? And... Just him saying, truly, I tell you, in Matthew, is reserved for 94 AD. So that shows you the second bracketing technique by the numbers. So 94 between 94 AD and seven years prior, well, six years prior here. Here, it's 22 years prior. These, these are statements about what history will be like. Well, yeah, history was like that. Because the, Roman, the Romans were busy building things they thought were to their gods, and they're going to be in ruins, just as they are today. They weren't in ruins at that time in 94, not yet. They were about to be, because actually the Roman Civil War was going to start up uh, um, within two years of this. Because the mission is going to get assassinated in 96. So everything he was building is going to be one left on another. Actually, they tried to kill him in 94. Okay, but it didn't work the first time. It worked the second time. And the second time or the third time. There were several attempts on his life toward the end. Okay? So this is a pithy statement about history. First using the temple and then showing how the temple itself going down is a trend of history because man is always going lateral not going to God Herod was rebuilding the temple to glorify himself not God and so this is the Greek for not one stone left upon another literally not left not one left on another see epi upon stone which not left on top Okay? Man's trying to do it himself is the worst evil. That's the story Pan Bible from Genesis to Revelation and it's reflected here. For a specific time in history. Alright? And therefore back up here at our first date line that was when our boy Domitian he started in 81 he was building, building, building to glorify himself. And actually, during this period, it wasn't only the stadium of Mar the, the the mission stadium he was building. This is when he first uh, deified his dad and his brother in order to make himself look good. Okay, and you can study all that in um, the articles on the mission. Just type the mission in Google and start reading. You know, any kind of you know valid source like you know university source. Wikipedia is semi-valid. You can go there for the re references. But, you know, just read up on it yourself. There are a lot of good books on the mission. Okay? And what he did and why he did it and stuff like that. Contemporary and current. Alright? 
So that's what this is for. So see, it's prophetic as well as backwards. So of course, 28 years prior to when L Luke writes, the historical event backwards that he's looking at is the cross. Okay, 28 years after Christ died. That's a significant historical event that of course relates to the text because Christ is the temple the temple depicts. You got that? Okay, so 63 again. Now, I'm going to let you play with that because I'm trying to show you methodology. So now we're going to just skip over to Mark. Mark's first date line. See, there's this, see here's a first date line in Matthew 49, which is the same as the first date line in Daniel 9 about the temple being down. Ha ha. Second date line, 63 years from when he dies. That's the millennium. That's a very common usage in the New Testament is to date forward like that. So, of course, Mark, uh, Luke does right here, as I just explained. And here's a backwards date, and it also functions as a forwards date. But when we get to Mark, see, this is Mark 13. Mark is already, from Mark 1, said that he's writing in Passover 69 A.D. So his first date line is not, this is really important, his first date line is not a lower number. Okay, he's not using 49 because the temple's already, see, the, this is what's really important. In 69 AD, the temple was already surrounded by troops. So a lot of things that are in the other Gospels aren't in Mark because the timing doesn't need to be said. It wasn't, you know, like in 58 AD, it was still predicted that the troops would come and surround Jerusalem, which is why Luke focuses on it in Luke 21. When, the, when you see the troops around Jerusalem. Okay, that's in Luke, but it's not in Mark. You know why? Because the troops were already there. It, it, it's not a prediction anymore. It's already happening. So now what is, Luke, what is Mark's big job? Mark's job is to remind them of Luke. Because it was Luke who said, when you see the army surrounding in Jerusalem. Luke had said that. So Mark is very clearly the third gospel. I've already done playlists on this in the synoptics to show you other ways you can know that, but this is one, just one more way you can know. He expects you to know Luke's gospel. He's using the same number for that reason, because of what Luke's gospel says. And of course, he's also playing very obviously on Matthew 24. Okay? So they're all using the same 63, except now that's his first date line in Mark. Well, what does that mean? Well, that's 63 years after Judea became a province. Judea, in 6 AD, became a province of Rome because the Herods were fighting with each other and Rome didn't want to deal with them anymore and just said, to hell with you, you're not even going to be allowed to be ruling it in your own name. We're just going to make it a province of Rome. That was when Quintilius took over as the specific governor of Syria. Before then he was a military leader in Syria. So when Luke talks about um, him as a hegemon, that's military, not civil. So everybody who's saying, oh well, see, Christ couldn't have been born until 6 AD because that was when this guy became governor of Syria. No, 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 no. He was already in Syria then with one of the heirs of Augustus and that was 4 BC end of 4 BC so 3 BC okay so he was already there as a hegemon is just a Greek word for a leader okay it often means military or civil so it doesn't say he was governor of Syria at the time he was stationed there he was garrisoned with one of Augustus's kids he was like acting as the mentor and it wasn't really Augustus's kids, it was one of his nephews. I think it was his nephew. Anyway, the point is, is that 63 here has a different date back. Because the people getting Mark got it in 69 AD. They knew what year they got it. So then what does the 63 mean here? See how clever it is. 63 years prior is when Judea became a province due to the fighting with the Herods. Okay? So that's another way that we can modern, we moderns can know that it's 69 AD. Even in Mark 13 by the time he writes that chapter. 
all right so you see we got 63 here 63 here 63 here so now we have something like a textual tic-tac-toe because that's the other way to use this okay that's what's important to know the order this is Matthew up in the top window the text is Amen Lego Humin which in English means believe it when I tell you and here is 63 that's saying that not one stone's going to be left on another which is of course what the next clause says in Matthew anyway so that what Luke did is he lim he eliminated the truly I tell you phrase in order to get his 63 to occur and yet have the same tie you see that see in Matthew it's believe it when I tell you in Luke it's the same it's the same timing of the same statement but it's the rest of the statement Luke likes to do that sort of thing not one stone will be left upon another is the text here also ending at 63 and then here okay what is Mark pick to say all right and it starts out and Jesus said to them you see all these great stones okay well then the three of them together form the same thing all right the same text of the same time that Christ is saying but for different periods of time see, there's two ways to use prophecy you look at the you look at the text fit based on the meter and then you look at the text parallels and see what times they are here we're looking at text para text based on meter they're all using 63 all right but the 63 isn't referencing the same time period this is 30 AD this is 30 AD this is 30 AD so you can see the tie to 30 AD and yes he said all those three things exactly you know at the same practically moment you see, so they're, they're, they're telling you when the text occurred, at the same time they're telling you something else. This 63 goes to 94 AD, going forward. This 63 goes 28 years past 93 AD. You get that, see, because it's 28 years later that he's writing. And then this text is also going 63 years past. 69 AD so they're telling you that the same trend will be true at all those points in other words not one stone left on another which is the center here okay the center not one stone left on another will still be true that's real important not one stone left on another will still be true even as it would be here 69 AD plus 63 AD alright so you he's writing it in 69 plus 63 not 63 AD 63 years 132 now why why is that important because that right in front of your face this calculator number is the beginning of the Bar Kokhba rebellion the Bar Kokhba rebellion was over the fact that their stones were still not on top of each other. The Bar Kokhba rebellion was by Jews against Hadrian to try to get the temple rebuilt. And by bracketing it this way, you're coming up on, oh, okay, then you would teach your children, hi, 63 years from now, the temple is supposed to still be down? And something bad's going to happen that that's going to make you think the temple should be up. Don't fall for it. And then they would pass it on to their children. So the grandkids would be alive during this time and look back at this and say, Oh, yeah, you see all these gorgeous buildings? Not one stone's going to be left on another. All right. So the people fighting to make stones left on another, we don't want to be part of them. Yeah, good. And what would you do then? you would get out of Israel. You would take your Bible and you would get out of Israel, which was a really good thing because the Bar Kokhba rebellion was put down by Hadrian and they razed the whole city and Jews weren't even allowed to enter it. 
So if you got out early, you would know from this text, Oh, get out! It's not God's will that the temple be rebuilt. Get out! See how valuable that is? Now, Revelation is written later. Revelation is written in 88 AD. The temple was already down. So John is not using 63. What is he using? 56 as his first date line. Why? And we'll cover that in the next increment.